substance-induced depressions. Again, there are many drugs that can cause depression, but you don't have to memorize the whole list. These are the four classes of drugs to always keep in mind when somebody's depressed. Uh, certain types of high blood pressure medications, antihypertensives, uh, clonidine, and uh, beta blockers uh, can, in about 9 to 10 percent of patients that take them over a long period of time, cause depression. These drugs are widely used, okay? Uh, the most common beta blocker is Enderol, generic is propranolol, and these drugs really work well for people. They're also used to uh, try to prevent migraine headaches. So the majority of people, it's not a problem, but that, you know, 9 or 10% of people, and I've seen people like this, and you will too in your practice, people come in and they give you all kinds of different reasons that they're depressed, but you finally nail it down and it happened within, you know, a month or six weeks after they started taking one of these anti hypertensives You got two choices here. One is to switch to a different class of high blood pressure medicines that don't cause depression, or if they're doing very well on the beta blocker, for instance, is to administer antidepressants along with that. We talked before about uh, estrogen, okay, uh, hormone replacement therapy, and also uh, oral contraceptives can cause depression, steroids. Now, this is dose dependent, and steroids, uh, have, there's a lot of very legitimate uses for steroids uh, in, in, in medicine. A lot of autoimmune disorders are treated with steroids. Uh, <clears throat> these are things like rheumatoid arthritis, uh, lupus, uh, colitis, Crohn's disease, uh, these, these kinds of drugs, uh, I mean, these kinds of illnesses, uh, some kinds of chronic pain, some types of severe respiratory problems like emphysema or chronic bronchitis. So there are people that are exposed to large amounts of steroids, and uh, the one that's given the most often is prednisone, but it's not the only one. But boy, oh boy, when I've had people who have chronic uh, severe mental illness and they're doing pretty well, and they, they tell me, oh, you know, I'm gonna, I need to get on steroids for whatever reason, I go, oh, holy mackerel, fasten your seatbelt, because uh, almost always it's just gonna throw gas on the fire. You can see here, depression is real common, but you can, you can get psychosis sometimes uh, with, uh, with steroids. And if someone asks you, in the pharmacy, you look at all prescription drugs, which class of drugs has the greatest likelihood of causing depression? And the answer is tranquilizers. And yet they are frequently given, uh, along with other drugs, for treating depression. Now, there are some legitimate ways to use tranquilizers in treating some kinds of depression. But in primary care, once again, there are problems there. A lot of times people are given tranquilizers for uh, stress, generic stress, uh, or, uh, you know, for uh, anxious depression, or, you know, what, whatever the reason is. Now, these are the doses of the, tran the most commonly used tranquilizers, and, and of course, beer is kind of the poor man's tranquilizer. Uh, these are equivalent, so uh, three milligrams of Xanax is basically equivalent to uh, five cans of beer. Okay. Taken on a daily basis, these are the doses that are most likely to result in full-blown severe depression. Not everybody gets it, okay. uh, but certainly it's, it's, it's up there in terms of drugs that can cause depression. Is that a normal Norm, normal dose? Is, is this a normal dose that they're yeah. giving to people? It's not. Uh, the, these are pretty high doses. Now, the, the one ex that's a good question. The one exception uh, is Xanax and the use, uh, using that to treat panic disorder. Uh, oftentimes it takes four, five, even up to nine milligrams of Xanax to really control panic attacks. But for generalized anxiety or stress, uh, these doses are, are significantly higher than they really probably need to be. <clears throat> okay, uh, over-the-counter drugs, uh, decongestants. Now, decongestants do not uh, cause depression, okay, but they can really interfere with sleep. And because sleep is so critical uh, for practically every psychiatric condition, but especially for mood disorders, so uh, 
this can be, you know, an issue. And a lot of people, they're not going to come in and tell therapists, oh, you know, I've been taking this decongestant, and maybe that, that's why I'm depressed. Or what have you. People, you know, people don't think that any over-the-counter product uh, you know, can cause problems, but it can. And, and what, you know, I think it's funny is they have these ads on TV for products that have Sudafed in it. They have Sudafed, you know, decongestant, a non-drowsy formula. Yeah, non-drowsy, like you can't sleep. You know, so thank you very much. Uh, alcohol is the worst drug in terms of causing depression, period, the end. It destroys sleep, it causes depression, it makes anxiety worse in the long run, but we all know it's very seductive because if somebody's very depressed or they're real anxious, you have a couple of beers or more, then that, you know, it will temporarily calm people down or help people go to sleep, but it comes right back and kind of bites them in the rear end because it, you know, aggravates depression a lot. Caffeine, uh, again, the, it doesn't cause depression, but it can really aggravate it because of its uh, impact on sleep. Uh, nicotine or stimulant withdrawal. Now, nicotine actually is a pretty good antidepressant. No kidding. Unfortunately, the delivery system, by way of you know chewing tobacco and, and smoking, can kill you, obviously. But the molecule nicotine itself has anti, some antidepressant properties. Uh, it pro because it's very addictive, it probably will never get uh, FDA approval for treatment of depression. But there's a lot of people who are chronically depressed, and they gravitate towards this. And this is just, now this is going to be an editorial opinion, but I bet money on it. I've seen this a few times. Somebody comes in, and they they have full blown major depression, and they're smoking a lot. And 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 they say, uh, you know. Uh, in, in the midst of getting treatment for depression. I, I really, really need to stop smoking. Uh, my advice to them is one of two things. Uh, I, I'll tell them, if you start uh, reducing or stop smoking, it really stands a chance of aggravating depression a lot. So the, the recommendation I have is either uh, put that you know, on hold, wait till you get the depression under control, and then go for it. I'm really in favor you know, people getting off of Nicotine. I mean, I've had friends. My dad uh, died from lung cancer. So, you know, I mean, I think this is really bad stuff. But you don't want to throw gas on the fire of major depression. Or uh, even better solution, though, is to uh, get nicotine patches or nicotine gum or something like that uh, so, so that they have the, the ongoing antidepressant effects of nicotine without it you know, destroying their body.